Hey everybody, my name is Austin. Welcome to Hope City Birmingham Online Service. If today is your first time joining us, drop in the chat. We would love to hear from you. We want to connect with you. Maybe send us a DM. We just want to encourage you to stay behind after the service. We've got a Zoom call happening. We would love to chat, you know, talk about the message. And we're not going to go into our worship slot. And I just want to encourage you this morning that as we, as we, as we worship God, I want you to, to, to prepare your heart for God to move. Whatever you're going through right now, you can lift it up to God through your praise and worship. Come on church, let's praise him. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your light. There is no rival that could ever stand against your might. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, we've already won. There is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us.
Father God, we look to you in this moment and we give you space. We give you access right now, Father God. We praise you for you are good and you are faithful. Thank you, Father. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song cause you are good you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, let the king of my
Hi there, my name is Sipo and this is Austin and we just want to both welcome you to church today and what an incredible time of worship we've just had. Austin, how good was worship today? Gosh, so good. So good, I thoroughly enjoyed that set and it's just a pleasure for us to be with you here today on our online service. We're not gonna transition into our time of giving. If today is your first time or you just stumbled upon uh, our service online today, don't feel obliged to give, but if your call is your home, I want to encourage you to step out today, to step out in faith because harvest time is coming, you want to keep sowing, and, and God loves a cheerful giver. That's so good, Austin. I love that thought. And just to remind you guys, this week we have dinner parties on Zoom, so don't miss out. It's easily accessible. You don't even have to leave your house. We even accept people in pajamas. It's fine. Um, the link should be in the description bar on our Instagram and we look forward to seeing you there. Today we're hearing from Chris Denham. He's the lead pastor of Leeds and uh, I just know that this word is going to bless you. So sit back as we hear from Pastor Chris Denham. Hey, uh, Hope City, Birmingham, it is great to be with you today. Uh, thanks for uh, having me. Uh, so wherever you're tuning in from, whether you're from Birmingham or you're tuning in from further afield, uh, my name's Chris, I'm the lead pastor uh, up in Leeds. And uh, just gonna hopefully share some really good thoughts for you this morning. But just before I do that, just a massive shout out to the Birmingham crew, uh, Teebs and Becky, your pastors, two of the most amazing people. Uh, we're huge fans, me and Gosha, my wife. And, uh, and so we, we absolutely love love them so a huge shout out to them and all the guys who are behind what's happening right now and uh, uh, I'm coming to you from our uh, Yorkshire studios uh, we have a studio up here in Leeds uh, where we're doing our services from and uh, so just a real privilege to be able to share the word of God with you this morning so if you uh, if you're if you're leaning in and uh, lean in right now if you've got you uh, make some notes if you've got a bible get a bible uh, let's get around the word of god and i'm going to read to you from mark chapter 4 it says this in verse 35 uh, that that day when evening came jesus said to the disciples let's go over to the other side and leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat and there were also other boats with him a furious squall came up and the waves uh, broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion and the disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, quiet, be still. And the wind died down and it was completely calm. And Jesus said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Don't, uh, do you still have no faith? And it says they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Um, I hope I don't get there too soon, but I've got a lot of questions I would ask when I finally do get to heaven. And, uh, you know, just, just some of the things that, you know, you kind of think about life thinking, why, why, is, why is that that way? For example, you know, why, is it, why are olives so prominent in the Bible when they taste so terrible. You know, I've probably just split the crowd right there, but I can't, they are the one food I just, I detest above all other food is the taste of olives. You know, what is, and another question would be, what is, it, what is it about this metabolism thing? How come some people have better metabolism than others? You know, how come some people can just eat as much as they want uh, but they still look skinny, whereas the, you know, some of us, like, yeah, it's a problem. It's an issue. Uh, uh, another question would be, why are spiders so creepy? Like, like what is it about that? Why couldn't, why couldn't God have made them, like, nice and fluffy? You know, so you see a spider, it's like, ah, oh, rather than see a spider, it's like, ah. Me, me and my son, Joel, we had to clean out his drum booth. It's the back of our garage. Uh, we made a sort of drum booth for him because he plays the drums. And he hadn't been in there for, like, six months because of the lockdown and, and all sorts of issues. Uh, and then so he went in there, and uh, it was full of spiders. It was, it was a fun experience. That's all I can say, especially this... Uh, especially when one jumped out, which was almost the size of my hand. I don't know why we have spiders like that, but, but I do have another question after reading this story. And that is, where did Jesus get that cushion? Like, like I want a cushion. I want a pillow like that. Because I don't know about you, when I go to sleep at night, I'm very picky about my pillows. Uh, I recently traded up to a memory foam pillow. Anyone got one of those? You know, the ones where, you know, it's it sort of, 
It's supposed to help your neck posture and all that kind of thing. Mine's even got a cooling gel down the side. That sounds really posh. It was from Ikea. But, um, but uh, you know, I'm really picky because, you know, if I, if I get to go away, if I'm staying in someone else's house or I'm in a hotel, there's nothing worse than getting a pillow that isn't comfortable. And I would love to know where Jesus got his pillow from because, because for some reason, in the midst of the craziest of storms, Jesus is fast asleep. Now, let me tell you about this day that we've just read about, you know, just to give you some background. Jesus had been teaching all day. In fact, in fact, the crowds had got so big uh, on this particular day that Jesus was struggling. They were almost kind of pressing in on him. So he did it. He did a clever thing. He got one of the boats that the guys had and he climbed into the boat. And so people are sat along the shoreline as Jesus is teaching from the boat. And at the end of the day, he says to his disciples, let's look. I'm in the boat already. Let's, you join me. Let's go to the other side. Uh, let's get out of here. And so that's what they do. And then I guess, you know, here's his, 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 his a helpful thought for every one of us. You know, Jesus was tired. You know, he was a human being uh, just like us as much as he was God. And so he, you know, he climbs into the back of the boat and he just goes to sleep on this exceptionally comfortable pillow. Uh, but then it says that this furious squall like a, 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 a terrible storm uh, comes up. And, and it must have been bad, you know, for the disciples to be f- fearing for their own lives. It must have been bad because they were fishermen. They were used to bad weather. They'd be used to the storms that would happen at different times. But this one was so bad, even they were fearing for their lives. And they see Jesus asleep and they're thinking, why aren't you helping? And so they grab Jesus, you know, by the shoulders. They wake him up. And, and, and so and Jesus, you know, wakes from his incredibly comfortable uh, sleep and uh, he, he calms the storm and the wind and the waves you know die down and they're able to cross over but there's there was one thing about that story that, that intrigued me that interested me and that was that, that in the in the fear that they have the disciples when they wake Jesus they don't they don't wake him to ask for help they wake him to ask for an explanation like listen to what they say they say teacher They don't say, teacher, can you help us? They say, teacher, don't you care if we drown? In in other words, how can you sleep at such a time as this? How can you, how how can you be resting right now when this this storm is, we're we're, we're bailing out, we're, we're we're in fear, you know, we are going somewhere where you asked us to go. How come, how can you sleep? You know, while we're fighting for our lives and, and I do think that's a bit of a, I think that's a familiar picture for us because how often when, when stuff happens around our life, how often do we find ourselves going to God and, and instead of approaching God and saying, Lord, how, how do I need to navigate through this situation? Instead, we find ourselves going to God and saying, God, why is this happening? Like, what, what, what is this all about? Lord, 2020, what are you doing to us? Uh, what, what is this virus thing about? What, what is this lockdown all about? Instead of going and saying, God, would you help me to go through and journey through this valley that I'm in right now? We often find ourselves shaking the shoulders of of Jesus and saying, like, why? Why is this happening? In last summer, uh, when we can all remember summers that were normal, um, we were were going on holiday. And I remember I did something unusual. I, I took two or three days off. Uh, to be on my own before I went away with my family. And uh, the reason I did that was because I knew I was quite stressed out. I knew I was, it had been a very busy year and, and I didn't want to get in the car and we were, our, our, our holiday, we were going to drive in the car to Paris, from Leeds to Paris, uh, stay a couple of nights at, at, at a, at, at, with family and, and see Paris with the kids and then we were going to drive from there to Switzerland uh, to stay in this beautiful region at, at, a, friend's, at a friend's cabin. And... Um, and so I just thought, I don't want to be in a car with my kids feeling stressed out. I want to feel relaxed when I go on holiday. So I did that. And so we got in the car, uh, having had these few days off. And as we reached the tunnel uh, down near Calais, uh, the car broke down. And, uh, and so we called, you know, we called the RSC and they came out and they got us back on the road again. And I have to say, I surprised myself because I actually went to that whole, that whole experience really calm. And we got to Paris, we had a great day in Paris and a couple of nights, and then we got back in the car and uh, we began to head to Switzerland. And uh, as we got to Switzerland, uh, the car broke down again. Uh, but this time it ended up in the back of a, a lorry being taken to a garage somewhere in the middle of France. Uh, and so and we found ourselves in a hotel, 
you know, having to work through with the insurance company who eventually gave us a hire car. And, and about four or five hours later, we got in a hire car on our way to Switzerland, leaving our car back in France. And I have to say, I got through that whole experience and all the logistics really calmly. It wasn't stressing me out. I was just thinking, Do you know what? God's, God's got a great holiday for us. I'm going to trust in God. And uh, we got to Switzerland. We got ourselves settled. We had we went, uh, you know, had a couple of days just settling ourselves. And then we got in the high car and went, went on our first big day trip. And as we were going along, this sort of white Mercedes Benz came around the corner very fast. And obviously, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road uh, in the wrong side of the car. And, uh, and it nearly knocked us off the road so much so I hit the curb with my tire and blew the tire. Now, so now we're changing a tire on the side of the road in Switzerland uh, of this higher car and uh, with my son. And I have to say, I was incredibly calm. It all felt, it all felt good. And uh, we, had a, we had a wonderful day. I said, nothing's going to ruin my holiday because I know God's got a great holiday for us. And then about another days later, I was making lunch for us and I was cutting the baguettes that we bought from the local shop. And as I was cutting them, I sliced my finger. And at that moment, I lost it. I was like, why? Why is this happening to me? And I remember I actually had an out-of-body experience because I could see my wife, Gosha, looking at me at that moment thinking, that's what sends you over the edge. We've had the cars broken down multiple times. You had a flat tire, everything else, and you cut your finger, and that's what goes, sends you over the edge. And, uh, and I just had to take a breather and go, okay, look, God's got this, and he's got a great holiday. But it did make me laugh at how when things are not going right, our cry is not, Lord, how do we navigate through this season? It's often, why is this happening to me? Here's what I've realized. That we're very quick to ask the why, uh, not very quick to see the how. You know, there's two different Jesuses in this story, uh, if, if you kind of look at it. And uh, I realize, you know, there's the Jesus who intervenes as Lord over nature and commands the storm to be still. And there's the Jesus who's asleep at the back of the boat. And I wonder which Jesus you've been looking for this morning. I wonder which Jesus you cry out to in the middle of a storm. I wonder which Jesus you're hoping will turn up in your 2020, whatever whatever else it throws at us. Because I realize that intervention Jesus is far more Hollywood. We like intervention Jesus. See, intervention Jesus is the, he's the hero of the story. You know, intervention Jesus is the champion that we all need. We love intervention Jesus. He's the perfect plot device that we need just at the right time to swoop in and solve a lot of the problems. Our intervention Jesus is king. He is Lord and he is God and he is mighty and to save. And so, you know, often when it comes to these moments, these storms, we, we want intervention Jesus because we need a king and a Lord. We don't like sleeping Jesus. Uh, we're not a big fan, you know, because, you know, we, we don't like the idea of Jesus being asleep at all. In fact, when things do kick off, when the storms of life do start to swirl around us, you can feel that wind just beginning to pick up on your face. Uh, we're eyeing up Jesus and we're like thinking, Jesus, what are you doing? Like, how are you going to act? How are you going to intervene? What are you going to do in my situation? And when intervention, you know, when Jesus uh, isn't responding, when it seems like he's still asleep, we're, we're, we begin to shake the shoulders of Jesus in prayer and saying, Jesus, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Like, what are you going to do? You asked me to go this way. You asked me to step out in faith. You asked me to, 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 to you know, live, live according, to this, this, to, according to this journey, according to this plan. And, and uh, we're, we're like, Jesus, we need you now to transform into intervention, Jesus. Would you calm this storm that I'm in? But here's the problem with that kind of thinking. Here's the problem with that kind of uh, understanding of, of who our Jesus is. You see, is that if we, if we live like that, we chase the wrong Jesus. You know, because here's what I've realized. Sleeping Jesus is more powerful than intervention Jesus. You see, intervention Jesus has power to calm, uh, to, to command the storm to be at peace. But sleeping Jesus is already at peace in the storm. You don't need an intervention Jesus. You need a storm sleeper. You know, there are plenty of storms that are going to hit our lives. And, and you know, 2020 has been an unusual year for that. And maybe all kinds of things that you would never have expected have, you've had to deal with. But then as, as we go through life, every one of us has to face struggles and battles. But, but there's, there's storms that 
will emotionally drain us, the storms that will overwhelm us, the storms that will cause fear to rise in us. And in those moments, you know, we can, we can look towards an in, to Jesus who intervenes, but if that, intervention, if that Jesus who intervenes doesn't turn up, then we'll, we'll, begin to, we'll find ourselves just shaking the shoulders of, of sleeping Jesus. And too often, not for help, but for an explanation, just asking why, why, why. But then in our quest for our why, we miss the how, how to navigate this season. Let me tell you something about this story. It was never meant to be a story that had a little title that says, Jesus calms the storm. If, if this story had gone the way Jesus would have liked it to go, it would be a story written in our Bibles that had the title, the, the disciples stay calm in the storm. Because as soon as Jesus is finished commanding the waves to be, to be still, he turns to his disciples and says, why are you, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? You know, Jesus is saying to him, surely, why, like, why did you need to wake me? Surely you could have applied faith. Surely you could have trusted God. Surely you could see that I was not concerned with the storm. So why did it concern you so greatly? You know, there is a greater Jesus that we have yet to meet. And that Jesus is the storm sleeper. He invites us to discover something more powerful than his ability to calm the storm. He invites us to discover the peace that is found in the midst of the storm that will help you too to be a storm sleeper. You know, because it's easy to busy, to be busy, to get caught up in, in the emotions and the stuff that have overwhelms us, but it's, it takes greater courage to find peace in the midst of the storm. Let me just give you some keys this morning, today, whatever time you're listening, uh, to finding rest uh, in your storm. The first one is this. We need to learn to accept Jesus as he is. You know, Mark chapter 4 verse uh, 36 says that leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Um, I love that. You know, Jesus didn't, he didn't stop. He didn't change his clothes. You know, he didn't go and do something else first. Uh, you know, he was just ready to go with the disciples as he was, and they were ready to go with him as he was. And, and I think that, you know, there's a lesson there for us because often I, th I think we, we want to change Jesus first. We need, we need Jesus to become something else. We need Jesus to become, uh, you know, just to, just to tidy things up a little bit you know we want Jesus to change his clothes look a little bit different you know we, we need him to be a little bit more acceptable on some of the issues that we believe in you know we want him to to think a little bit differently we want we want the word of God to say things just a little a, a little bit more conveniently or a bit more comfortable for us but that's not how it works that's not that's not how this thing works we need to be willing to take Jesus just as he is you can't, you can't take pages out of the Word of God. You can't, you can't strip stories away from, from who Jesus is. There's no, there's no stopping. There's no redressing to take place. That when we, that, you know, we, when we meet Jesus, we need to learn to accept him as he is. Because here's, here's the thing. You can't rest if you're wrestling with Jesus. You'll never find the rest that is found with him if you're wrestling over him. We need to accept him just as he is because Jesus isn't going to fit your worldview. He's not going to fit into the box that you want him to fit in. He's not going to do things the way you always think uh, he should do things. You know, in fact, Jesus does things the way we don't expect. He says things that we don't expect. And just like the disciples, you know, who didn't expect him to do what he did, Jesus was going to show up in our world, but he's going to do things differently to the way we might think and we, we can't shoehorn him into our, our thinking, our way. We need to accept him as he comes. You know, because here's the thing, Jesus doesn't say, if I come to you, if you're feeling weary and, 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 and burdened, I'll, I'll come to you and give you rest. Now the scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You know, if you really want to find rest for your soul and not just a good night's sleep, not just, you know, not just a, a little bit of peace for this moment, but if you want to find rest for your soul, come to Jesus as he, he is. Accept all of Jesus so that even in the midst of your storm, even if things are not going the way you thought they should go, you can find yourself with the storm sleeper. You can find yourself with, with the Jesus uh, who is all 
that you need. You know, that's why the Bible says, let's seek him first, you know, before we seek his action. The second thing is this, accept him as he is. Secondly, be with Jesus where he is. We need to learn to be with Jesus where he is because, you know, he, wa- he wasn't in the front of the boat directing the disciples. He was in the back of the boat uh, asleep at the moment. But can I just say for this point, it doesn't matter wh- whether he's at the front of the boat directing and commanding the waves or whether he's sleeping at the back. The most important part of this whole story is that Jesus was in the boat. He was in the boat. And so the question is not, where is Jesus? The question is, where are you? Are you in the boat with Jesus, you know, whether you're experiencing, whether you need intervention, Jesus, or whether you're resting with sleeping Jesus, the good news is that Jesus is in the boat. And where Jesus is, peace is going to be found. And if you're looking for some rest today, then, then you'll, never, you'll never find rest unless you find yourself in his presence. His presence is the pl- only place that we find rest for our souls. You know, that's why we press into the word of God. When you press into the word, you press into his presence. When you press in with prayer, you press in to his presence. When you press in in worship, you press in to his presence. The very fact that you got up this morning or or this afternoon, you've tuned in, you know, whatever place you are right now, whether you're listening in your car or whether you're tuned in in your kitchen, you know, that you did that deliberately. And can I say, don't just deliberately tune into a, to a service so that you can be part of a service. Choose to deliberately tune in so that you can, be, be, you can get into God's presence just a, a little bit further, a little bit deeper. You know, because when, you know, when Jesus promised the Holy Spirit, the whole point of the Holy Spirit was so that we would have God's, it says, Jesus says in John, John 14, peace I leave you. My peace I give you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit at this moment, you know. And, and so rest is as a result of getting into his presence and being filled with his spirit. Uh, guys, you don't need an intervention to rest. You just need a revelation of his presence. You don't need the storm to be still right now in order to find rest. You don't need 2020 to be over. You just need to come into his presence where the Prince of Peace is absolutely present. Here's, the, here's the, my last thought. And that is, uh, you know, find him just as he is. You know, we need to be where he is, but also recognize that Jesus is more than a teacher. Realize today that he's more than a teacher. You know, this, it says that Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Let me say to you to, to, today, Jesus is far more than just a good teacher. He is the Lord. You know, uh, as they wake him, you know, they say, you know, uh, you know, can you help? Well, they don't say, can you help? They say, don't you care? But Jesus, you know, doesn't respond to them. He just gets up, he calms the wind and the waves. But I love what, I love what happens at the end here because because as that all happens, it says, it says that, well, it doesn't say, but it shows that the fear of God came on them. And they, t- they say in Mark, Mark chapter 4, 41, it says that they were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I love that moment because they went from asking Jesus, teacher, to, to bowing in, in f- the fear of God and worshiping him. And I wonder, what is your revelation of who Jesus is today? Is he just a teacher? Is he just someone who, you know, gives you some helpful tools and tips for for doing life? Or is he your Lord and your God? You know, the, the good news, the gospel is that Jesus Christ, he didn't just come to, 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 to give us some good teaching, but he came to die on a cross and he came to defeat death and sin he came to rise again to be our resurrected lord and king you know and and that is the good news for every single one of us that he comes that we might have life and life to the full you know we don't worship just a jesus who is a teacher we worship a jesus who is lord he's the lord over your storm he's the victory in your battle he's your provider he's your healer he's the king of kings and the lord of lord and everything that the devil could throw at you jesus has already defeated and won the victory over. 
So I like, who are you gonna come to today? Who, are you, who, who in the midst of your storm, in the midst of everything else that's going on in our world right now, who are you coming to? Who are you coming and worshiping? Are you worshiping someone who's just gonna give you some helpful tips for getting through the next few weeks? Or are you coming to the storm sleeper who is full of peace, who is full of help, who is full of, who has all that you need? Are, are you coming to the one who commands the wind and the waves to be calm? Are you coming to the one, you know, not just, a, not just a guy in a boat, but a king, a king who will return, the supreme son of God. You know, when we find ourselves at rest in his presence, we're not resting in the presence of a nobody or a philosophy. We're resting in the presence of the supreme son of God who holds the whole world in his hands. He's not just a teacher this morning. He is our king and our Lord. Let me pray for you as we come to a close right now. Father God, we thank you that you didn't just send an angel, but you sent us your son. We thank you that we get to experience, have a revelation and be in relationship with you and your son and the Holy Spirit. And we pray that that would be a defining moment on our lives right now, that, we'd, that we, we would push aside just good thinking and, and good philosophy and we'd realize that right now, in this moment, we can be in relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so, Lord, where there are storms happening all around us, Lord, we, we pray, Lord, not, not not help, but we pray, Lord, lead us. Lead us, guide us through this season. Help us to navigate it well. Lord, because we know, Lord, You will calm the wind when, you need, when it needs calming. You will shut down the storm, Lord, when it needs shutting down. But we thank You that even when it rages, Lord, we can still find peace. We can still climb in next to You and find peace in the middle of everything that is going on because You are the storm sleeper, because You are the Prince of Peace because you are our King and you are our Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. You know, if you're watching today and you do not have that relationship with Jesus, then can I encourage you just to say a prayer right now. It's just a simple prayer. It just invites Jesus into your life. I'll say it with you right now and you can, you can do that. And then, and then let us know that you've, you've prayed that prayer so we can pray with you further and we can you know, point you towards, we can connect you with people that will help you in that, relation, that, that journey. But, uh, but if that's you, and you need to enter into a relationship with Jesus, why don't you do this right now with me? Just say these words, Dear Jesus, I thank you that you are my King and you are my Lord. Forgive me for my past. I, I want the new life that you give me. And so I receive that and I, and I welcome you into my heart and into my life as I choose to make you my Lord and Saviour from this day on. I ask it in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, thanks for having me today. Uh, love you loads. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, in the meantime, have a great week. God bless. Come awaken your people. Come awaken this city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every struggle will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every song will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground.
It's all for you, really ain't nothing new We ain't been loving you, it's hard to choose Really hard not to lose, you ain't throwing out the dose It's all for you It's all for you It's all for you, really ain't nothing new We ain't been loving you, it's hard to choose Really hard not to lose, you ain't throwing out the dose It's all for you It's all for you. Yeah, yeah. It's all for you. If God ain't the heart, what's any of it? If you ain't give your all, did you really love it? Was it ever yours in the first place? And if we talk about grace, I need plenty of it. Can't stop what's God, yo, I'm really gunning. We finna start a little fire like a mini oven. They want a piece of the pie, I'ma give it to them. But they ain't hearing what they like, they got a weak stomach ball. I ain't worried about that. I was all alone, I ain't even getting called back. All of me the drugs, I think all y'all need to fall back. This Christ still bruised, cause the body looking all bad. Yeah. Where did we go? What do we know? If you about that, get ready to roll. I never doubt that I'm still in the boat. But you walking away though. It's all for you, really ain't nothing new. We ain't been loving you, it's hard to choose. Really hard not to lose. You ain't throwing out the dose. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you, really ain't nothing new. We ain't been loving you, it's hard to choose. Really hard not to lose. You ain't throwing out the dose. It's all for you. It's all for you. Yeah.